Good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, November 11, 2020. My name is Maya Bray, and today I'm here with Aaliyah Matthews. And before I get into my questions, I'll have Aaliyah introduce herself. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Aaliyah Matthews. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a human development and family studies major at UNC Greensboro. So Aaliyah, where did you grow up and what do you recall about your childhood? I grew up in Clarksville, Tennessee. I moved to Fayetteville, North Carolina whenever I was 15. But growing up in Clarksville, it's a very, um, when I was a child, it was a very rural area, but there is a military base close by. So as I was growing up, um, I started to get more urban. We started to get like more bigger attractions and like shopping centers and stuff. But it remained like predominantly white, predominantly conservative. Uh, still to this day, when I go back to visit, there's a lot of, you can, you can tell it's the country, basically. Um, it was kind of, there's like a clear division between like the black side of town and the white side of town where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, the school that I went to, an elementary school was like right in the middle. So I went to a pretty diverse elementary school, but there was very, um, I would say like clear, like prejudices and like discrimination against like five-year-olds. I remember in kindergarten, um, my teacher refused to pronounce my name right. Uh, she would call me Alaya every time she did the role. And I would tell her like, no, my name's Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. And one day she was like, okay, well, that's too hard for me. How about we just call you Allie? So that was like my first experience very, very young where I realized like something is kind of different. Yeah. And through like middle school, um, I went to a very, um, I went to a white middle school um, because I did like a immersion program because they started moving STEM into the county, but they did it in one school. Mm -hmm. So I went to the STEM program at this middle school and this girl was like, I think it was like in seventh grade, this girl was like, they let you guys do the STEM program too? And I know that like she didn't mean it in like a, in a way that was racist, but it was just kind of one of those moments where I'm like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I'm smarter than you. <laughs> So it was very obvious that like the city had like a very, I mean, being in Tennessee in general, like Tennessee is Tennessee, like the stereotypical, like hillbilly, uh, like Trump supporter state, like that's Tennessee. Um, so growing up there was very, it was a lot. Uh, and then when I moved to North Carolina, it was a little bit better because I moved to Fayetteville, but it's still like, there's an obvious, like there's an obvious divide, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did this um like make you have low self-esteem growing up or? I definitely affected my self-esteem. Um, being a lighter skinned black person and so my mom is black and my dad is uh, Puerto Rican and Samoan but people always assumed that I was half white mm -hmm. and that definitely had a big impact on um, like the way that people talk to me. Um, it would be I remember uh, this boy that I liked in seventh grade. He was white. His name was Brian. And um, we wanted to go to the skating rink and our parents had to meet first, the whole shebang. And his dad was like, uh, literally in front of me and my mom was like, you didn't tell me that she was half. And I just remember standing there and being like, this, like you said that in front of me. Um, but it really kind of made me feel like, you know, people are assuming that one, that there's something wrong with me because I'm not clearly fully anything, but also there was just kind of like this attachment of, um, you know, she's a lighter black person, it's okay. Or the attachment of something's clearly wrong with her family because there's, you know, they're like black people, and white people mixing, like the whole uh, interracial couple thing was a very huge issue where I grew up and to think about like in the 2000s people are still like against we're still against interracial couples but not even knowing that my dad wasn't white um it was just a lot of me not being black enough or me being perceived as white so I was trying to make sure that people knew like I was doing everything I could to be like hey I am not white like please stop like don't assume that I'm white I promise you I'm not I would be like but these are my parents like showing people pictures and stuff like these are my parents you know, I just happened to be like really pale um, and definitely like surrounding my skin tone, but also um, like my hair texture. 
I, for the most part, keep my hair like twisted or I used to straighten my hair every single day in middle school because I have like huge, like coarse hair. And it was just one of those things where people would be like, okay, but I thought mixed people had good hair. Like it's just, it was very hard for me up until probably I was like 18, just grappling with like the way that I looked and the way that like people perceived me based on how I looked. It was, it was a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with um, all the protests occurring over the summer and some that still are occurring now, I know everyone has their own personal reason as to why they went out in protest, but what was your reason? Oddly enough, um, my grandfather was a cop for, okay, well, a state trooper in Tennessee for um, 30 years. And just the amount of stories I would hear him tell about uh, people being mistreated and how, um, like his goal was just to, you know, even if you were doing the worst thing possible and, you know, you got caught that he didn't want to make people feel like less than human because that's not what his job was. And seeing, um, just seeing explosions of, you know, um, police brutality, people being killed by police, that's something where that has always like bothered me um, because I saw firsthand that you don't have to be violent. You don't have to be like abrasive. You don't have to treat people like garbage just because you're a police officer. Um, my first experience protesting was actually whenever Philando Castile was murdered. I was 19 at the time. And that experience really, I would say, pushed me to just want to be involved 100% in any way that I could. Um, just seeing that you know, Trayvon Martin had been murdered four years prior and it was still, I was a child at the time, but I made it to 19 and this is still going on. And now I'm 23 and it's still going on. So it's just one of those things where, and then back of my mind, somebody has to fight for this. Um, we have to come together and fight for this because it's clearly, it's not going away. There's clearly like a disconnect somewhere in like police training or I don't know what they're telling them, but how across the country is it evident that they think that it's okay to do this whenever they're putting out this message of like, we're here to protect you, we're here to serve you. So I think a combination of my grandfather representing like a, a true dedicated law enforcement officer who's doing his job um, like the right way and seeing the amount of people who aren't doing their job the right way, seeing the amount of people who are losing their lives as a result of police thing and they can do whatever they want to do like that came together and it really like pushed me um to get out and protest this summer so um while you were out protesting do you recall how the police reacted to the amount of people that were out protesting in Fayetteville um so I protested in Fayetteville and did a little bit of organizing in Greensboro but in Fayetteville um it was a lot like the first night of protesting our mayor, um, Mitch Colvin, actually led a peaceful protest um, down the center of like the major street in Fayetteville, Skybo Road. So before that ever even um, like materialized, before everyone even got together, the police like, or the police or somebody, but the police were involved, called for a shutdown of all the businesses on that street. Mm -hmm. Like they were calling for people to prepare for a riot. They were calling, they were telling people to stay home not knowing that it was a completely peaceful protest and the mayor was at the front of the protest, leading the protest down the street. They were like, okay, we need to shut everything down. This is at 2 p.m. and they shut literally every business on that street down. And that's like the major street where everything is in Fayetteville. Um, that kind of like progressed where, you know, the pro that peaceful protest moved downtown to like the center of the city and from that point, the mayor was like, I'm, I'm gone. Like, I did what I'm supposed to do. I showed up. I led you guys. I took my pictures. Um, but from that point, um, like, the police were down there, but they were kind of, like, standing on the sidelines watching people. As the sun went down, though, they were bringing in, like, trucks of police and riot gear. And nothing had even gotten violent at that point. You know, it was just, it really felt like a party down there. And I know that when we think of protests, we don't think of like people happy and in good spirits, but it literally felt like a party. Like J. Cole was down there. Um, Dennis Smith Jr., uh, he's from Fayetteville, he's a basketball player, he's in the NBA now. Um, he was down there and it was really like, it felt like fellowship. 
Um, everyone was down there just talking. People were chanting. Everyone had their signs. There were like babies down there. There's a ton of people that everyone was like in peace. Like there wasn't any violence. There was no rioting or anything, but they were sending police down like truckloads in like riot gear and with like batons and with the riot shields and it just seemed like to me that they were not necessarily like preparing for something to go wrong like they were itching for something to go wrong um it just didn't make sense to me like we're all down here people gather downtown all the time like they do festivals downtown all the time it was no more than what they would do for like the dogwood festival which is like a folk festival um which is typically draws like large crowds of like white people and you never see police presence down there um but for us down there listening to music and just talking and having a good time really just enjoying being around each other as like the black community like they were ready they were ready to get crazy i guess um did you feel motivated or inspired by like the messages the speakers delivered out at the protest I definitely did because they were, um, it was a call to action. Like they were saying, you know, Fayetteville has our own history with um, the police force, our own history with police corruption and people being mistreated by the police. But also, you know, black people are black people no matter where they are in the country. And this is, you know, a fight that we should all be fighting. Um, there's a woman down there. She had lost her brother um, to police brutality. And also that day, I had found out that George Floyd was actually, um, like his family was from Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. And I guess just seeing people, like finding out that information, but then also people giving their testimonies and people standing up and talking about how important it was to them um, to make sure that we were, you know, that we were showing out and we keep showing out in these big numbers and we keep doing work beyond like that single day that definitely inspired me um, to continue to protest. What emotions do you recall while you were out at um, all the different protests that were going on? I'm naturally like a high strung person. Um, so like my anxiety was up here because I'm, I'm just thinking about all the messages my grandpa put in my head, you know, if you get stopped by the police, just you know, cooperate, if a police asks you for identification, just give them identification, but also going in there having to be on guard, like, okay, stay away from the police, stay with, you know, the group that you came with, um, be on the lookout for, like, signs that something's going to go wrong, like, that coupled with, like, just a lot of passion and knowing that, like, that's where I needed to be, um, that there, there could be, literally, I could be sitting at home doing whatever, because we're locked in quarantine, but like where I needed to be was right there. So I felt like that was like, I was in my element, but also like I had to be on guard. So I was freaking out, but also I was like really like happy to be there. Did you encourage others to go and protest with you? Uh, my boyfriend actually went with me the second night of protesting in Fayetteville. It was actually my 23rd birthday, June 1st. Um, so him and a couple of his friends we all went down there um like the night of june 1st at first he wasn't really um he didn't really want to protest his thing is always you know i i feel like i'm not educated enough on the subject i feel like I'm, i don't have like the same passion as other people who are here so i don't feel like it's where i should be but i was like no we're going um like regardless of how much you know regardless of how much um you understand like when you're there, you'll get it. Like when you hear other people talking about it, when you hear people chanting or when you see everyone together, whenever you see the cops in riot gear, whenever nothing's even going wrong, like you'll completely understand. Um, that night was whenever things got crazy. So he really understood what was going on. But um, I just felt like it was important, number one, because I didn't feel safe just going down there by myself after seeing what had happened um, the day before where cops were just already ready in riot gear, but also because um, I just felt like it was one of those moments where you should bring as many people as possible, or you should expose as many people as possible to it. So with being in an environment with a variety of different personalities, what would you say you learned while you were protesting? I definitely learned that people don't um, protest the same way. Like people don't 
express their feelings the same way. People don't um, like grieve the same way. There were people who were like irate, like screaming, like ready, ready to fight, um, which is completely understandable. Like I definitely understood that like everyone's feelings around the situation were valid. There were people who were silent, like sitting on the sidelines, passing out like markers and poster board, giving people masks if they needed them. And then there were people who were like, guys, let's keep the peace, guys, let's keep the noise down. So there's definitely like a, like a mix of yeah. different personalities and different motivations but it all seemed to like work together um lastly protests bring awareness but what other ways do you feel could bring awareness i think that social media is a huge um, advantage that, that we have one of the things that i was doing on social media for the days that i couldn't protest or the days that like i would be making it there late um just making sure to pay attention to the news uh, to give people updates because not everybody watches um, like mainstream news, but also mainstream news doesn't always give us the information that we need. Um, sharing bail funds, that was definitely a big thing um, over the summer with the protests, just sharing bail funds so that people who were arrested at protests because that was happening like on a huge scale. Um, making sure that you're sharing those links because there are people out there who want to engage and want to like donate and help people. I would say that also spreading awareness as far as just, you know, if you hear about a protest, just let people know like, hey, this protest is going on. Um, this is where people are going to be. This is the event. Um, I would say beyond that, spreading awareness, also like educating yourself. Um, I challenge myself to make sure I read books, um, like books by Black activists, books about like just black struggles in general, just so that you understand the history and understand that like what we're up against right now isn't anything new. Um, it's been stuff that we're struggling with for centuries and that there are works out there where if you feel like you're not educated enough on the subject, like there's material out there so you can educate yourself. So I think definitely um, like educating yourself is a great way to spread awareness because you know someone might come to you with a question and you're like, oh, hey, I read about that or, here's a link to this article or this resource. So even in, if you're not physically out there protesting, you're still sharing information with people. I know I mentioned lastly, but um, are you glad that you went out to protest even though you felt it might've could have went better than how it did in certain cases? I definitely am glad that I protested just because if I feel like if I hadn't have done it, I would have been kind of like hard on myself or I would have been like, you weren't doing anything, so why didn't you go out and protest? But also just being a part of like that history making, being a part of like that moment um, in each moment every time I protested, because it really is something um, I feel like if there's a way for you to get involved, you should get involved. And just understanding that like this is a fight that we're probably going to be fighting for the rest of our lives. This is a fight that people fought like far before us. And I feel like it was important to be a part of that um, because I've always kind of focused on wanting to push for black liberation or push to improve black people's material conditions. And I feel like protesting and being in the face of white supremacy, letting them know like we're here, this is what we're demanding. We're letting you know that this is wrong. I really wanted to be a part of that. So I'm glad that I did. Well, thank you for your time today and all your meaningful responses. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Of course, thank you too.